artificial intelligence. Two words that are all the talk at the moment in the digital world. We've of course all heard of the famous ChatGPT, the fastest growing app in the history of web apps, but this world of AI driven applications is of course so much bigger than just ChatGPT. Right now I've been spending most days working here out of a co-working space in Bali called BeWork, where many of my co-workers are using AI tools all around me. There's even a weekly meeting each Tuesday night to talk about the latest trends in the field of AI, a field that is moving incredibly fast. And be work aside, I've of course been noticing how tools like ChatGPT and Midjourney are transforming the world of written information and image generation respectfully. But I'm yet to see anything I thought could help me and what I do as a Shopify theme developer. But then I started hearing more and more from you guys online, as well as friends and coworkers in person about tools like GitHub Copilot, Locify AI and Cursor AI. And I realized I really needed to take some time to look into it. So when a new Shopify build came across my desk a few weeks ago, I decided I would push myself to use AI as much as I possibly could. And spoiler alert, it's not a silver bullet, but it definitely can help with a few things. Let's take a look. Locify AI. I think I first heard about Locify AI from one of you guys on YouTube, but it wasn't until I was searching for a proper Figma to Shopify solution using AI that it appeared in my search. In my previous video on no code Shopify, I tried out another tool with a similar promise to take a Figma design and turn it into a Shopify section. And if you watch that video, you might remember how it turned out. Not great. But with AI in the name, I thought Locify might be different. So I gave it a go by feeding it the entire home page design of the website I was trying to build. Some parts of it did all right and others it messed up, but unlike Instant Page Builder, which was the app I tested in the no code Shopify video, Locify AI is not connected to Shopify. So I would still need to break up each part into different Shopify section files, write Shopify section schemas for each and update the HTML to use the dynamic data from the theme section. Also with the interactive elements, while it did seem to get the look right most of the time, I wondered if the implied functionality would have been interpreted and built properly by the AI. For example, I didn't tell it that the theme already had Swiper.js installed and that any solution it creates should use that particular JavaScript library for the sliders. I mean, did it even realize that this section was meant to be a slider to begin with and that these buttons were to navigate through the slider? With too many questions, I backed out at that point. I wasn't a fan of the complicated interface and it just felt like it was going to be too much work to rejig all the code to fit exactly how I wanted it. So I didn't end up exporting the code and I just left it there. Looking back on the experience now after using the other two tools I'm about to mention in this video, I realized that I'm quite opinionated about how I write my code. And so I'm going to have some resistance to any tool that has a different opinion on how to build the solution. For those of you who don't know, opinionation is a commonly spoken about concept in software slash web development. Opinionated in web development basically means that something is forcing us to build in a certain way. And this can be a problem when you have a different idea on what pattern you will use to build your solution. Which brings me to GitHub Copilot. I think I first heard about GitHub Copilot via one of you guys in the comments, but ever since I learned about it, I've been meaning to try it and now was the time. Through my existing GitHub account, I entered my billing details and signed up for a 30 day trial. For those of you who don't know, Copilot is not exactly an app, but a plugin or extension you use in your existing code editor, which for me is Visual Studio Code. Once installed, you get an extra panel where you talk to Copilot in a similar way to what you would ChatGPT. So to start off, I asked it to create a basic header section for me. I decided to use the word basic because I didn't want it to add too much stuff that I then had to remove later. I took the code and I pasted it into my section file. As you can see, it correctly inferred the liquid loop that needed to be used to pull the links from a link list. So we were off to a small but good start. Of course, like ChatGPT, you can continue to expand upon your query in the chat panel. And so I decided to ask Copilot if they could add a section schema for the header. And surprisingly, it knew how to write a Shopify section schema as well. There were some minor mistakes to fix. At first, it failed to include the section object at the beginning of each reference to a theme setting variable, but I don't think it ever made that mistake again. I noticed with GitHub Copilot that it did blank on a few occasions and every now and then it would produce the code and then back out of its answer due to this weird error. 
Most of the time, however, my prompts would produce something useful and I got better at figuring out what the AI could do well and what it didn't quite understand. One thing I was really pleased with was how I was able to get Copilot to write the code how I wanted it to. Remember how I talked about opinionation earlier? Well, I found that I could get Copilot to write the solution in the way I preferred by simply asking it to. For example, the JavaScript it produced, I realized I wanted it written as a web component instead, so I simply asked Copilot and it transformed the code accordingly. I didn't like that it used the shadow DOM though, so I asked it not to use that as well and it understood the assignment well. One thing I found it was really good at was taking my instructions when it comes to class names. I asked it to namespace all of my class names with a certain namespace and it updated the class names perfectly. When I asked it to switch to the BEM convention, it handled that near perfectly as well. So as you've seen so far, I can use the chat panel and I can also select some code and write a prompt on a very specific section of the code, but I can also accept code suggestions as I'm typing, which is both a little annoying to be honest, but can be pretty handy when you need it. I noticed that if I was able to do a good job describing the section to be built, it did pretty well to give me some establishing structure to work with. The only thing I wished it could do is that it wasn't able to read an image and build me a section based on the visual design rather than a prompt. And that brings me to the next tool, Cursor AI. I first heard about Cursor through a friend of mine who's not a coder, but claimed he was able to write apps without knowing any code as the AI is just that good. It sounded ridiculous to me, but I knew that I had to test this app out and find out for myself. Unlike Copilot, Cursor AI doesn't plug into Visual Studio Code, but it is a fork of VS Code. So the experience is quite similar. As I mentioned, it doesn't seem like you can attach an image to a prompt in Copilot, but with Cursor, you can. I asked Cursor to build me this featured article widget based on the attached design, and this is what it gave me. Obviously, it still needed to link the dynamic content, so I made those changes and was left with this. Not bad, but still a lot of work to do to get it exactly like the design. Here's another example where I asked Cursor to code up an article grid item, which it did pretty well with, apart from the icon, which it had pulling from snippet files that didn't exist. Going even bigger, I fed Cursor the full template for the article page, and this is the result. In the end, in this case, it didn't help too much, so I didn't use the code. Like Copilot, I found that some of the code suggestions were amazing when you did want it, but then when you didn't want it, it could get kind of annoying. Thinking about what else to test, I heard that Cursor was great at querying the web, and so I thought maybe I don't need to leave the app to look up the Shopify liquid reference, and I can just ask Cursor to find me the relevant information from the documentation. For something like this, asking what date format I should use in my liquid filter, it did pretty well. To build this related article section, I tried something new with my prompt to reference existing classes and snippets, and it did it pretty well. And here is the final example, the contact us page. The output here was pretty handy, and so I used this as a starting point for further customization. All in all, I'm definitely glad I started using these AI tools and will continue to use them and push their limits moving forward. In fact, given my experience with Copilot and Cursor now, maybe I could get a better result from Locify if I fed it designs section by section rather than a whole Figma frame. My view on AI at this point as it relates to Shopify development is this. You 100% need to start using these apps to speed up your workflow now, but you still need to know what you're doing in terms of both your knowledge of theme development, as well as knowing when and how to use the prompts. It's not making our skills as a theme developer obsolete anytime soon. That's why I recommend incorporating some of these apps into your workflow as soon as possible. As for the future, none of these apps are going to be able to add and automatically pull the correct content from your Shopify store without admin API access. Therefore, for this tech to reach a point where it can write 90% plus of the code for you, it would have to be a Shopify app or a tool that Shopify creates themselves. And so my official prediction is this, Shopify will put out their own AI assistant development tool within the next few years. In the meantime, think of these existing tools as more of assistance. We don't know how fast this technology will progress, but right now, none of them seem to be a replacement for a Shopify developer who actually knows what he or she is doing. 
And if you're interested in becoming one of those Shopify theme developers, you know where to go. It's shopifythemedeveloper.com, the ultimate resource for learning the skill of Shopify theme development. So that's all I had to share in this video, but let me know what you guys think. Have you tried some of these tools yourself? What was your experience? Are there any other tools that I need to try out? Of course, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.